Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for joining the session. I'm Judith Kohliver, and I have a background of a little bit over 12 years in cell and lean therapy. I have worked on the academic side of it for seven years, and now with Kerber, I'm working with our cell and lean therapy customers on the implementation of a software for cell and lean therapy. And what I would like to do in the next 15 minutes is to share a few of the things that we have learned based on that. So, what do we do with data in cell and lean therapy, and how do we want to collect them? I would like to start by summing up a few of the challenges that are quite unique to cell and lean therapy and that we very often see when it comes to data management. So, the guidelines in cell and lean therapy, as it is such a young field, are still in development, right? We have seen the new guidelines from FDI. We have seen the new guidelines from ICC-BBI, who alone have, in the last year, released two new guidelines on ISPT-120i. So with that, of course, we are within a changing field, and we need to adapt to the developing guidelines. We are dealing with sensitive data. As soon as we have a personalized therapy, obviously, we have a patient's data, patient's name that need to be protected. We have a very large amount of data, not necessarily they, that they are really available, but we are having a lot of data that actually are generated over the complex procedure. We have very manual processes, especially compared to like biotech and traditional pharma where we have a lot of automation. Here we very often see operators executing the process step by step. And then, of course, we have the variability. Because of the patient variability, also we have data variability within the process. Now, based on that, we see quite a specific ecosystem for digitization in cell and gene therapy. If we think about what happens on the shop floor, of course, we have the cell processors, multi devices, Teremu devices, um, uh, and others that are out there that really perform the manufacturing part. And then we have the analytic equipment, cell counters, flow cytometers, ELISA readers, you name it. And here, of course, we have data that are generated at that we want to use and that we want to control. So on the execution level, we very often see electronic batch record systems, but they are only half good if we don't do anything with the data. So we not only have the EBR system, we also have a system that is available to analyze the data. In our mind, they are very, very tightly connected because we can pull the data directly from the EBR containing all process data, pulling the data from analytic equipment, and with that, basically perform an optimized data analysis program. We see finite scheduling tools that are available to really do the finite scheduling. So as, of course, the cell growth and the cell process really determines uh, the scheduling, we need a system that is very close to the integration. And on the other side, we have analytic orchestration. Can be a LIMS, like in traditional pharma and biotech, but not necessarily, because in cell and lean therapy, a lot of the uh, companies actually come to the conclusion that the limb systems are not perfectly suitable for their particular process. For example, because the sample program is defined by the process and not uh, by a sample program that would be predefined. So with that, we have analytic orchestration tools, can be a limbs, can be something else. And then, of course, we have the planning level, so the traditional ERP, but we also see additionally the cell orchestration platforms like Trixel, like Hypertrist. And in case you're wondering, this is what we do. So we provide an MES um, with a heart of an electronic batch record system and combined with a data analytic tool. Both of them can be used standalone or integrated with each other. And with all other systems, we partner because we know that there are so many great solutions out there. So what we want to do is that we make it easy to integrate, that we partner with them to really make sure that we have a standardized approach for integration because integration of systems is a huge investment. Um, but other than that, we rely on they are doing what they can do best, which is focusing on the different systems. Now let's say we have this ecosystem, probably not the complete ecosystem from beginning on, 
We always focus on what is the biggest challenge and which system can solve this challenge, but step by step we will evolve into an ecosystem. The digital data that are occurring on the, on the shop floor first need to be collected. And of course, the first data source is an electronic battery cord or an electronic lab notebook, so however we can collect our process data. And electronic battery cords are great. It's a really useful tool, um, but of course we have to implement it right. And as this is kind of our core competence, I would like to dive in a little bit more. Now if you think about electronic battery cords, it really has two jobs. It has to control the process and it has to collect the process data. Collecting the process data is always the same, no matter if we are in clinical trials, in R&D, in commercial, it's always the same idea. We collect everything that is done on the shop floor. And for example, by having an operator entering everything that they do, we are collecting the complete process data. Now, how about the process control? If we are in clinical trials or in R&D, of course, we don't have a completely mature process. We still require a lot of flexibility. But at the same time, it's not that the complete process is flexible. It's not that we can just do everything. What we need is a kind of controlled flexibility, how we call it, where we have the possibility to guide the operator through everything they have to do, provide the data that they need, but do not restrict them from the flexibility that we need in clinical trials and r &D. So in order to do so, we see very often, especially in clinical trials, still using SOPs where the instructions are um, written down for the operators, the SOP is shown automatically to the operator, they are doing what they want to do, and they are documenting the process. And over the maturity, um, over the maturation of the process, of course we can put more and more data into the EBR, let the EBR take over the calculations, provide the information to the operator by the EBR, and with that get more and more mature. We do also, however, focus on a few um, specific aspects when it comes to electronic battery recording. Plan of identity and plan of custody are really low hanging fruit because it's a lot of administration effort. It takes the operators a lot of time to really make sure that they document everything that they need and they never change. Plan of identity and plan of custody requirements will stay the same over the complete journey. Things like critical parameters develop early in the clinical trials. Equipment management, usually if we start with a piece of equipment, we will take it over until commercialization. And then later we can focus on things like implementing the QC methods for material tracing or the integration of equipment. So with that, we basically have a phased approach for our electronic batch recording, starting with the low hanging fruits and developing to a completely digital process. And with that, we have the full flexibility, it's very easy to implement, and also the operators can be trained step by step in order to take over the complete digital process. Two other great digital data sources are cell processors and bioreactors. Not all of them, especially the ones that are used in cell and clean therapy and that we see very often used by our customers, are really having digital interfaces. So we always face a challenge that we actually have a lot of data available, but we can't automatically use them. And transferring them manually, of course, is a lot of effort required for our principle. And it's just many, many different steps um, where that need to be uh, documented here. So what we have done is that we generated an adapter that can basically take the data of a, out of an XLS, a PDF, or whatever file and via parsing, extract the data, generate a digital message for the system, and with that, we have the possibility for all equipment that is currently used to really um, make the data available directly for the electronic battery record. And then we have flow centimeters, nuclear counters, ELISA readers, and everything else, and also those, of course, either provide a digital interface or provide an XLS, PDF, TXT, or any document that we can read out by parsing um, into an electronically readable message. 
Now let's say we are documenting everything that we can document and make use of all the electronic data that are available. What do we want to do with that and why do we do it? If we analyze data based on every unit operation direct individually, we will never have a complete process understanding. If I look at the MRI and look at the transduction rate, these are two parameters that are related directly. But that the feeding density in the first unit operation will influence the, vari the viability, not only of the first, but also of the second and third unit operation. That is something where we are really at risk to miss out of a, of a dependency that we actually have in the process. So what we are doing is that we say we have the possibility to create a holistic process data model and with every run that we execute, engineering runs, training runs, but also patient runs, we can optimize this process model and improve our process understanding without any additional effort because we have already implemented it. So if we think about a classic cell and gene therapy process with cultivation, genetic modification, ex vivo expansion, and a, ha a harvest phase. We have the different parameters that influence the specific unit operation, but also the parameters that influence each other between the different unit operations. And with that, we have a holistic idea about how are the different data interdependent from each other. So this is how it could look like. These are mock-up data. Um, they are not, not used of, of any customer because all of them are still in the process optimization phase. But this is basically how it would look like. So for example, in cultivation, we have the four different parameters. And in transduction, let's focus, for example, on MOI. Now we see that in this case, these are uh, normalized data. We have an MOI that is in the lower range of the, uh, of the defined, uh, in, the, in the lower area of the defined range. And we see that we have a 43% probability of an out of specification for target cells and 1% out of specification range for the viability. If we increase the MOI, we see that the amount for out of specification for target cells is drastically reduced and the viability is still okay. So with that, we can basically mimic every situation that we want and, for example, do an optimization for the MOI in order to understand how do I need to define my MOI in order to get the optimal result for viability as well as amount of target cells. And now, of course, we can integrate these data and say, well, if I look at the viability over MOI, I see that at very high MOIs, I have a very low viability, but other reaching, after reaching a certain threshold, the, M the viability actually stays the same. And at the same time, the amount of target cells increases with MOI. So with that, I have an optimization problem. I have the possibility to actually generate, for example, using a Python notebook, any optimization that I want to do and look, for example, for the perfect MOI with the perfect amount of target, uh, target cells as well as viability. And with that, we basically have a step-by-step -step approach how to digitize our process and how to understand the process. So if we start here and say we have a certain amount of digital data and still a certain amount of manual data, we can use the digital to data automatically for process optimization and process validation. With that, we increase our process understanding, we increase the process maturity, and with that, we, uh, we automatically have digitalization enablement. Digitalization enablement leads to the possibility to have more digital to data to, again, automatically use for the data analysis, and with that, we have a self-optimizing um, process model that drastically increases our speed to market. So just as a summary, um, about the five aspects that I mentioned at the beginning, these are the recommendations that we would draw from this. For the development of guidelines, we see that it's very useful, obviously, to collect the process data using EBR, electronic lab notebook, you name it, and also all other digital interfaces to make them easily available. So really the key message is, if we have them available, let's use them. 
for sensitive data, it makes sense to really store them in one system, for example, Trexel, Hypertrust, or another cell orchestration platform, because they can just pass on any identifiers that are unique um, to the certain method. And with that, we only have to worry about the patient safety information in one specific system. To overcome the amount of data, we suggest to collect and store the contextualized data as soon as available in one centralized data hub. In order to overcome the manual processes, we suggest to collect the manual process using an EVI, electronic lab notebook, and also use of adapters for electronic interfaces. And to overcome the data variability, we suggest to use the holistic process model to facilitate the process characterization, and with that, we can better understand the process and the different interdependencies. So if you have any questions, comments, or would like to discuss, please feel free to reach out. So we are here together with two colleagues um, at the conference. Of course, please feel free to reach out to us afterwards, and we also have a booth, so you will definitely find us. Thanks for your attention.